Hi folks and welcome to today's video. When is a surgery needed for a herniated disc? Now, I'm going to make a lot of content for those folks out there suffering with low back pain issues, such as sciatic and nerve pain, bulging disc, herniated disc, lumbar stenosis, lumbar arthritis. If that is you, hit that subscribe button. You'll be notified when I make some great new content for you to get you back on the road to recovery. But without further ado, let's get into today's video. So folks, today I want to talk about herniated disc surgery. When is it needed? Now, as most of you know, if you do follow my channel, I'm a big proponent of trying to avoid surgery as much as you can with the techniques and exercises that I do prescribe yourselves and clients. However, in some cases, surgery will be needed. So we're going to go over those today and talk a little about some of the issues with surgery as well. Now, the literature will tell you that 80-90% of cases, people who do have a lumbar herniated disc will recover normally without the need for surgery using conservative treatments. However, there are some times where surgery is most definitely the best option and is needed. One which uh, area it is definitely needed is when you have really severe cauda equina syndrome. This is where you have severe compression of all the nerves that come out of the lower back region. This typically involves really, really bad static in both legs, potential extreme weakness in the legs, the legs giving way, a lot of pain, a lot of soreness in the lower limbs, and that has to be operated on very quickly, typically 24 to 48 hours sometimes, to avoid further nerve damage in person, obviously losing movement and mobility in those lower limbs. So in that particular case, yes, it is most often the best case scenario is having surgery. Now, another time that can also happen is when the person has severe, severe pain. So typically, when you're in the acute stages, you will have a lot of pain either from in the back or sciatica running down either one or both legs. This will typically start to dissipate 7, 10 days. It will still be quite high intensity, up to sort of 21 days, maybe even up to uh, 4 weeks, but it will be coming down gradually. However, if you find yourself in severe pain after 10 days, 2 weeks, you know, 20 days, etc. it's just not going away, then perhaps surgery would be the best option for you. Now, in some cases, we also have severe weakness in the legs, especially the legs. You will have perhaps what's called drop foot, where your foot will basically drop down, you can't lift your foot up. Those people that do have severe, uh, severe weakness in the lower limbs, which is not improving. Obviously, initially, when the nerves are getting compressed, you will have, of course, issues with movement, etc., in the lower limbs. If it's not improving after two weeks, three weeks, then they typically will recommend you do go for surgery. This is to prevent further damage to the nerve and preventing loss of the sort of movement of that limb. Okay. There may be other cases, especially if there's issues in the nerves and you've got bladder control, going to the bathroom, etc., where if they don't do the surgery, you will end up with permanent nerve damage. So you must get that looked at, okay? So there's definitely certain cases where you will potentially look at surgery. One other one is the long period of time. Um, if you've not seen any recovery, sort of up to that three-month, four-month mark, if it's staying the same, you're not getting better, you've hit plateaus, um, you may want to look at surgery as a potential option. Now, I'll come on to sort of success stories, people who have suffered for a long period of time, in just a minute. Now, what do I mean by normal progression? So, typically, um, it will tell you in the literature that people have symptomatic relief after four to six weeks, okay, which is a reduction in your symptoms, pain, movement, etc. right? However, for discs to be manageable, perhaps not fully healed under the microscope, but manageable in that you can do your daily activities, you can you know, maybe start to play some sports. I tell people six months up to a year to be fully back to normal, okay? So if you've not seen a significant improvement in the first four to six months, because it can be slow, many people, they heal at different rates, it can be very slow, then potentially surgery could be an option for you to have a look at if you're not making good progress at the four to six month mark, okay? However, on the other side of that coin, surgery, I don't take surgery lightly, I avoided surgery myself with my own L5S1 herniated disc and bulging discs L4, L5. I've avoided surgery uh, with a torn meniscus in my right knee, torn labrum in my left shoulder, torn labrum in my uh, left hip and also my right hip as well. Um, I have avoided a lot of surgery over my time. I carry various injuries, which I've all managed by getting stronger, more mobile, etc. 
So there are risks with any surgery, as you know. Going under the knife it can also lead to complications. Sometimes surgery is not always successful, okay? There is quite a high failure rate, especially in the first six months to a year after the surgery. And I'm going to tell you two uh, quick stories here. I had a client I was working with uh, last year, and a lady from Australia. She was recommended a fusion, okay, when she first went to the doctor. Um, young lady, early 30s, couple of kids, married. She was like, ah, I don't think so. She used to work uh, within a hospital setting, and she's made a great recovery. She was working with himself, with somebody else as well. We were working together with her, and she's made a great recovery, okay? So she was able to avoid getting quite heavy, severe surgery. I had another client, or actually it wasn't a client, it was a chap on my free advice call I was talking with. Um, he sent me the surgeon's report. I'm not going to say names here, I'm going to be in trouble. And the surgeon was doing a, what's called a laminectomy, and he also was cleaning out a herniated disc. And the client sent me the report. The surgeon had actually written down, went in, cleaned out disc material, did this, did that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Within six months, the particular person involved had re-herniated the disc, and he sent me the uh, reports. He sent me the MRIs, and I'm looking at it thinking. To have, to have such a huge second herniation so close to the first one just doesn't seem right. Something doesn't seem off here. So second MRI, he went to see another doctor, surgeon, and the doctor said to him, um, honestly, the first surgeon did not do what he said he did. He did not clear out that herniation. I can tell you factually, he did not do it. The client tried to contact the original first surgeon, of course. He didn't want to know. Couldn't get an appointment, couldn't get to see him because he obviously knew that he hadn't done what he said to the client he had done. Crazy, crazy story, okay? Um, so there are risks with surgery, right? So I would try as much as I could with as many conservative modalities as possible. You know, I work with a lot of clients around the world, Australia, USA, Sweden, Germany, UK, uh, Italy, all over the place. And a lot of those people have come to me after they've been through physio, which has perhaps failed them, they've not got the results they were looking for, and they've come to me almost as a last resort, okay? Now, I can say I can't help 100% of the people 100% of the time, but I can at least make progress with probably more than 90% of the people I work with, okay? Um, so if you're out there struggling, it's been a long time, um, you know, you've, you've struggled with your issues, you're potentially thinking about surgery, Jump on a free advice call. I do a free advice call for people. You can get the link down below, click on there, book a time, have a chat with you, 45 minutes an hour, give you some things to try to see if you can get benefits with conservative treatment, okay? A really good success story, I'll actually link to the video after this video. Um, chap called Bob, I'm working with just now. He's made amazing progress. Uh, we talked about it in a video we did together. You can watch his video. Um, and if you want to follow my story, I'll actually pop up another video for you in just a minute or two, which you can look at my own story of coming back from herniated to disc and the recovery process that I went under to get to that point. Okay, guys? So listen, folks. Some points there that if you are considering surgery, what are the things to look out for if you should be going speaking to a surgeon? Okay, I hope it's been useful. I also recommend you get a second opinion, speak to two different surgeons if it's possible, because some surgeons do operations one way, there's more than one way to do um, disc herniation surgery. It is good to get a good understanding before you go under the knife. All right, guys, listen. Hope this video has been useful for you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a great day.